Who is vegetarian in the audience? Who is vegan? Who is not vegetarian or vegan? Okay, well, we have a, we have a majority here. Um, we have two fantastic um, uh, speakers um, here who are going to talk from two very different uh, perspectives on this issue. Now, so, without further ado, um, we have uh, Gitmarie Johansson, who is a self-described urban hippie and zero waster, and we have uh, Rosina uh, Vosala, who is a uh, restaurateur and believer in cuisine and all things culinary. Now, uh, you'll see on, um, on the board here, we have two statements. Uh, Rosina's statement is, the elimination of artisan meat is destructive to culinary culture. And you can see that Gitta Marie is saying, industrial livestock production is cruel. Now, um, we have the ability for you to vote in real time uh, for this event. And the really cool thing in this format is, as our speakers are, um, are talking, you'll be able, we'll be able to see the real time vote. Um, Rosina, Gitta Marie, can you come on stage, please? <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice Rosina, meet you. nice meeting you. Um, who would like to go first? I would love to go first. All right. Over to yeah. you. Three minutes, please. Three minutes. But thank you so much for having me, Brain Bomb. I'm really delighted to be here. Um, I can tell you, I am a vegan. I eat only a plant-based diet, um, but it wasn't always like that. For the majority of my life, I ate meat and dairy and eggs, and I wore leather and all of the things you usually associate with animal agriculture. Um, but three years ago, I went vegetarian, and about six, nine months ago, I went completely vegan, because I work in sustainability, and I realized that, and this is extremely relevant in our sustainability debate, because um, animal agriculture account for more pollution worldwide than all of transportation methods combined, including trains and including airplanes and cars. Animal agriculture is magnificently more de uh, polluting, which I, in good conscience, could not support whilst knowing these facts. Furthermore, uh, methane emissions, which comes primarily from cow farts, um, account for more pollution and for more damage than CO2. That enough should make people go vegan for the planet. Furthermore, I also learned, according to the British and American Dietetic Association, that uh, meat and dairy and eggs are directly related to several types of cancers. It is directly related to several types of diabetes and to heart disease and obesity. So we have health and we have um, the planet. So the last thing that really pushed me over the edge, the last thing that really helped me go fully vegan was the ethical and the moral aspect of it. Because animals, they feel pain and they feel fear and they suffer. And the animal agriculture industry, they put billions and billions of resources into providing us of that, uh, not providing us, but they put billions and billions and billions of resources into not letting the consumer know these facts. We as consumers are completely detached from the fact that this is actual living beings that we're hurting unnecessarily. Furthermore, <laughs> just as my last statement, the American and British Dietetic Association also concluded that a plant-based diet is by fact, the most healthy way to live, also for children, old people, and pregnant women. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Within the time, too. I really appreciate it. Rosina. Thank you. So um, the culture is a very important thing in this debate, and I completely agree with that, and I don't believe that uh, sustainability equals radicalism, because, because you shouldn't be radical to, to leave a, a, a smaller footprint. Uh, you, 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 if you go vegan, as some researchers say, uh, actually you need bigger land. You can feed less people from the same square feet of land if you're vegan than you can uh, if, you, if, you bre if, you, if you do work with animals. And um, I truly believe that this is a matter of sustainability, but in my part, I, I am a restaurateur. I work with food, I communicate through food, and I carry on traditions. And I believe that our culture and our tradition is carried on in gastronomy and in culinary, as well as in history books. And um, 
If I couldn't use meat and if all the people would be vegans, uh, I couldn't communicate as well. My grandmother and uh, in a lot of regions, the traditional cuisine, the traditional, uh, traditional dishes include meat. Uh, I don't believe that any of your grandparents were vegan. And I, don't, I think it's a trend. It's not a bad trend. And I give uh, space to no, it. No, no, no. D don't start agreeing. Keep disagreeing. This okay. is great. I'm sorry about it. So I just say it's uh, not black and it's not white. There is also uh, 50 shades of grey, as you say. <laughs> nice. nice. Cool right. So can I ask you a question? Have you ever killed your own animal and eaten it? Yes, I did. Can you tell us which animal it was? It was a chicken. It was in Vietnam and it was a chicken because um, in Vietnam it was a very, very intense uh, um, experience in Vietnam when you arrive to a village they kill the oldest animal as an appreciation of the new guests so that was a poor chicken it was uh, the oldest uh, animal in the village was a chicken so I uh, I had the privilege to 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 have this experience it was as a person who mostly meets meat in the supermarket boxed uh, it's a very intense uh, thing but it happened, and I believe we all come from the, our ancestors. We're all predators. We are carnivores. It still happens in nature. So um, <laughs> I believe it's the most natural way of living, as you can imagine. I would just like to start by debunking something you've said about the amount of space it takes to grow meat in context to the amount of space it takes to grow vegetables. First of all, it takes about 16 pounds of grain to produce one pound of meat. So we have a calculation there that it's not add up with the fact that you're telling me. Furthermore, it also... <laughs> no, but okay. it, it is true. Also, 80% of the mammals on Earth are either human or animal livestock. Animal livestock accounts for such a vast majority on the dis uh, of the domesticated nature of what we want to call it. Animal agriculture is also the lead reason for uh, deforestation and this massive, insane mass distinction that we're facing for the first time in over 100 years. It is all due to animal agriculture. Animal agriculture is also responsible for about 85% of the world's soy production, which is, as we all know, is can be at least extremely unsustainable. But that is all animal agriculture. And what you're talking about is a whole other reason. What you're talking about is, you know, sort of chaos mentality, our ancestors, but that is the furthest from what we're doing today. It has nothing to do with animal agriculture whatsoever. What about religious traditions? Because many religions, of course, you know, yeah, meat obviously. is a fundamental part of religion. And we need to acknowledge that culture is extremely important. I work in culture myself, but I do not think that culture should dictate morality. I do not think that that is a discourse that we will apply in any other situation, because if we talk about for instance, women's glorification. It is not a valid argument. It is not a valid argument when we talk about women's rights or people's rights in general. So why do we think it's a valid argument? Because we're talking about um, beings that we do not have a personal relationship with. Answer, it is not. It is still an Good. unvalid argument. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much. Well, the debate's not over yet. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. So um, I believe that animals were also always as they are right now. So uh, so in in anim like if, if I like watching Animal Planet, so like I like watching the predators. Uh, it's a, it's I believe it's in our nature, but. Um, apart from that, uh, instead of going radical and in, instead of eliminating the agriculture, why don't we change it? Why don't we see the future in sharing economies, in sharing agriculture? As I've just been to London and I found a farm in the middle of the city where people were growing their own cattle and they were sharing the food. And I believe a shared energy is the future, as in uh, transportation as well in food. You, you keep using the word radical, which is something that I obviously take note of, because I do not see anything radical in refusing something that wasn't even yours to begin with. You'd, 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 you say that animals have always been the way that they are, which is not true. We have genetically enforced sorts of types of races of animals 
they are so dependent upon the presence of humans that they cannot sustain themselves. We have bred cows into, uh, dairy cows, into producing 10 times more milk than they naturally would so we can take it. It is extremely painful for them to be alive. We have also uh, bred chickens into laying up to 20 times more eggs than they usually would. It is extremely painful for them to be alive. I do not think there is a moral or cultural argument against that. No, there is not, and I comp- it's like it's like I'm I'm the devil now. It's like <laughs> I feel really like the devil, but I don't believe that there is no, no in the middle. You know, like I'm I don't not agree with what you say because I'm not into like animal like being animals raised like that. But I I truly believe that if you know where your food is coming from, if you know the farmer, if you go back to those uh, farmer and consumer connections, then this can be done in a very nice way without uh, causing pain and without causing that much suffering. But it will, unfortunately, it will, per definition, always cost pain. And I also think that just because you know the farmer, it does not less make the process okay. any less sustainable. Time's up, time's up, time's up, because I want to involve uh, oh, our audience. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a question? They'd like, oh my word, yes. Okay. Very, very nice. Please. Okay, so, um, uh, so I'm vegetarian now, and I'm just getting into vegan, which is kind of a hard thing for me. Before that, I was like um, debating with my cousin, who was at the time vegetarian, and I wasn't. And I, I told her that everybody is eating both, and that, that's, that's the thing, you know? So the point is what I want to state is uh, that it, it's not kind of a radical thing, go step by step and to understand because I got your point, but if you truly start, for example, cook... You okay, say, great, we got your point. Well, let's, let's have the speakers respond. Okay, I would just like to say um, that veganism is not about radically changing your life. It is the act that is... Com- it is no passive act you can ever do. It's about refusing something. It is not about adding stuff to it. There's so many delicious things you can eat as a vegan. Trust me, I eat all the same things as I did before. Lasagna, burgers, ice cream, everything, but vegan. So it's the same food. I get it same places, but without pain, suffering, and the unsustainable practice. Uh, probably, I could never show you uh, the Hungarian cr- cuisine, truly. Uh, like, if you come to my restaurant, uh, there couldn't be like a true Hungarian dish that this country is proud of, uh, without meat, without the, the it's it's very very important in culinary. To but there's so many delicious mock meats and so without, many delicious without the tradition and without culture. Uh, it's a new way of thinking. Okay, next question. Pardon. The question goes to both of you. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about uh, artificially grown meat? Artificially grown meat, culturally and ethically. Great question. Thank Definitely, you. really, really good question. It is something that I, I generally feel we should invest more time and analysis into because the fewer animals that get slaughtered every year, the better I think it is. And I'm also a really big fan of the mock meat, for instance, because it's a great transition meat or a great transition product. And the same with with uh, with you know synthetically grown meat as well. It's a good transition product. So in that sense, as long as no animals are killed, it is also way more sustainable because it, it demands way less resources. A hamburger, for instance, um, it requires the same amount of water as letting your water tap run for three years straight. And that's not the uh, issue with uh, lab-grown meat, for instance. I just happened to taste one of the best burgers in my life. It's called the Impossible Burger. Yes. Yes, which is I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> I'm just really have to share this. It's the Impossible Burger has never seen a piece of meat and it was amazing and, and they delicious. could have tricked me into that it was meat. It's from whoa, whoa. Animal Myoglobins. We're agreeing with each I'm other. Sorry. We are agreeing on. with each other. But that is so <laughs> whoa, lovely. Whoa, whoa. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's I'm not my I'm sorry, point. it's the truth. Next question, please, sir. Yeah, um, I think there's a third per- or oh, fourth person missing there probably, and somebody yes. that could talk about what two billion people... Are you missing from the stage? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. About what two billion people eat daily, or once every three days at least, which is insects. Yeah, two insects. billion people in the world eat insects that have neither a, a cultural, well, a, a meat impact, like you talk about, and obviously there's a cultural rift there that we need to do, take into consideration. What's the question? So question, the question real is, quick. What's your opinion on insect diets, and do you think this is a future trend that we should um, invest in? 
I personally think it's completely unnecessary because, <laughs> as we can see, you can get all the things that you need and all the things that taste really nice from a plant-based diet. So why, in sorry for the expression, but why bother bringing insects into the equation when because you can get it? Because tarantulas are tasty. They are. I swear, they are really, really tasty. You should try. If you're not against me, tarantulas are tasty. No. Insects are... I'm against all kinds of, ah, of, of, of meat. So I thought I can trick you with tarantula. No. No. E even, even though it's, it's an animal that does not look like us or feel like we do, perhaps it's still an animal that is still being killed unnecessarily. Why? because vanity and because of our taste buds. There are no other excuse than we like the way it tastes. And you can get the taste anywhere else, so It's why? tradition again, because I happen to taste tarantulas when I was in Cambodia, and Cambodians eat tarantulas on an everyday basis. And it was an amazing uh, experience for me. I loved it. No, never eat cockroaches, they are disgusting. I tried that we one We've got lots too. and lots of questions still to come, please. Uh, hi, I'm an uh, agriculture engineer. And what you said about chickens and uh, cattle is true. We are breeding them to produce more eggs and more milk, but we are also doing that with wheat and with vegetables and with fruits. It's exactly the same system. So uh, that said, they can also feel pain, like uh, the smell of freshly cut grass that you can smell is actually a signaling system between the plants to tell them they are being slaughtered. They so <laughs> it's exactly the same system. There is no difference between them. Thank you. There is a very viable difference between them because I hear this thing about plants feeling pain all the time, but there's a really significant difference between pain response and effect response. If you ring a doorbell and the doorbell makes a sound, it's not because it knows you're there. It's because it's an effect, it's a response. If plants have feelings, then we need to deconstruct what feelings are. If pain, for instance, is a response in your brain that tells your body you need to get out of this situation. However, plants are completely static. They cannot move. So pain receptors in plants would be completely unnecessarily and a bit cruel as well. Um, it does not have any biological effect. So plants do not feel feelings. They feel responses, which is completely different. And the way that we modify grains, for instance, again, completely different because it is not in the expanse of living beings that can feel everything we do to them. Pigs, for instance, are just as intelligent as dogs, if not more intelligent than dogs. Okay. Um, I don't know about the feelings of plants, but um, <laughs> I, in Argentina, for example, in the pam pampas... You're uh, just showing off now. Oh, I had my... <laughs> 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 I've, never, I've never been to Argentina in my life. Oh, okay. uh, never, it ever. Like, it made I it sound really like you want, were there. No, uh. I really want to go there, but I've never been there. So, for example, there is uh, a way of handling uh, the, the killing of uh, the beef that the pampero who has spent his life with taking care of this beautiful meat uh, is taking uh, the beef out and, uh, and killing it on, on, on the fields where it spent his life. So basically without pain and without uh, the nausea of, uh, of being dragged into uh, like a slaughterhouse, it's a, it's a very, very kind way of saying goodbyes. And, uh, I I, have, I love uh, I love that part of this culture, Argentina, because I believe this should be the, a way that farmers. Okay, great. Question. So my question is: um, some people's gut composition requires that they actually eat meat, like maybe um, chicken or just white meat, basically protein. So what do you say? Should they just you know? Okay. Yeah. Apparently, we need uh, to eat it because of our stomach enzymes. That it, we do not need to eat animal products because of our stomachs. We need to eat protein and calcium, and we need the nutrients that can be found in meat, but that can be found anywhere else as well. That is the important part. Just recently, I went to my doctors to get some blood checked out, and before the test win, the doctor said to me, she said, um, you need to eat eggs and dairy at least two times a week, otherwise you won't be healthy. And I told her that's not going to happen. So a week later, I got my results, and to her surprise, I was one of her healthiest patients, and she told me, did you eat meat? Did you? No, no, no all plant-based. I can literally get anything that my body needs, and that is the same for everybody. Everybody can live a plant-based diet if they educate themselves upon the right nutrients. That is the most important thing, because what people sometimes lack on a vegan diet is the amount of calories. People usually eat too little, which is the main problem. People need to educate themselves upon the nutrient facts in their food. That right. is the most important part. If you don't mind, we've got a question down the front here. Right. I want to get as many questions as we can. All right. Please. Yeah. 
we've talked about the nutritious part, we've talked about the efficiency and sustainability, the moral part. What about cost? Uh, I'm interested in, in the cost efficiency of the same amount of meat, organically grown, of course, uh, uh, grass fed, and of course, and also plants. I mean, the real ones that you actually have taste and everything, that, that it's not produced massively. Rosina, you go first. Um, I'm a restaurateur, and uh, honestly, with the, I could not answer that question with, with the, my best knowledge. Uh, I, I truly, I just read this, um, that I truly believe that, um, honestly, the cost, uh, cost of, uh, of raising uh, organic uh, products are on both sides very, very high, I believe. Um, Probably raising meat and cattle is going to be going to cost a lot more. It is way more expensive, obviously. It's, it is way more. Exp yes. <laughs> okay. All right. You can have one agreement. That's it. You're done. Okay. No more okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Um, um, something people always ask me is, how can you afford to be vegan? Because I do not have the largest budget in the world. Just FYI. But um, plants are so so more cheap. Just. Really, um, the amount of money we spend on animal products are insane. And animal products on so many things. The, the amount of money I use on beans and legumes and lentils, um, it's so vastly different. Um, so if you want to live a budget-friendly lifestyle as well, it's also vegan all the way. The thing that, that can be expensive about veganism is mock meats, for instance, but you do not need those every day. They can be a special sort of treat. That's the case for me, at least. Um, but I think one of the most important things in this context is also sustainability as well. Because we need to invest and we need to vote with our money, as I said earlier as well. It's a really, really important thing to remember. How we spend our money is so impactful. Yeah, okay. Uh, folks, we've we run out of time, unfortunately. Can, no. can we, yeah, we, we have. Can we get Why the final then? vote? What's the final vote? Oh. 52 to 48. <laughs> so first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations thank and thank you, thank you guys. And if someone wants to meet up for a veggie burger afterwards, I'm so up for that. So <laughs> yeah. Also, you please come if you want to. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You thank you guys so Wonderful. much. It's so lovely to see you. Thank you. So thank much. you. Awesome.